because I'm a Lexus and Melinda's art space. Got an art journal page today. A little rusty on doing voiceovers. I haven't done one in so long. My videos have been a little lacking. Let's just put it down to life. Um, so working in my Atlas book, and I wanted to put down a base of colours. So these were some, this is some deli paper or some, when we go to the supermarket in Australia, you can walk up to the deli and ask for small portions of things. They put in a plastic bag and then wrap it in this thin paper. It's like newspaper, just without the print on it. And I'll use it under things, uh, under my art journal on my table, just to top up paint. And I think these ones for when, when I was jelly plating or something. But they had cute colours on it. So I decided to paste them down in the background just with a glue stick and start building my page from there. I wanted to, I do work in this altered atlas book. Sometimes I let the map page throw, show through. Sometimes I just want a blank page to start with. So I'll just add some paper over the top. I love the format of this book. It's almost 12 inches square or just about. So I like how it's like a square format. I'll choose altered books because um, A, they're cheap, B, they're fun and C, you can get loads of different um, combinations of sizes, shapes, even got some round ones I have to locate and then I can have a round art journal that's going to be fun just in a box somewhere <laughs> so just trimming off the excess papers I didn't trim I don't tend to trim things down before I stick them on I'll stick them on and then I can get them really really close to the edge I find if I go to measure something and go to stick it on uh, sorry cut it out before I stick it on I always do it the wrong size and it's always short so this is just the easier way just seeing another one of my art journal pages I believe there's a process video of that one on my website as on my YouTube channel as well slowly filling this altered art book up it's amazing how many pages are in an art journal whether you buy one or you make one out of an altered book to fill up my art journal seemed to go on forever so just grabbed some paint and wanting to add some more paint to this um, background so that one's a heavy body paint I think from Spotlight we've got one from Montmartre basically just rated my colors of acrylic paint this is one of my stencils I make and sell through my website. Not sure whether that actual design is there or not. Um, if it is on my website, and if I remember, I will link it below. Um, my website's always linked below anyway. So just popping some circles on. Didn't really have an idea of what I was doing when I started this art journal page. I just One night I just wanted to play. And these are things that were, I found on my desk. So I just decided to play with them. Quite happy how the page turned out eventually, but it does go through some interesting, um, interesting layers. I'll put it that way. So how's everyone going? I haven't feel like I haven't chatted to you for ages. So the important thing is when you're doing painting like this is to dry between the layers. And sorry, I should have cut that drying out. I usually turn the video camera off when I dry. I obviously got distracted on this one. I have sped this video up three times, so I usually don't work this fast. <laughs> um, just so it's not a hugely long video. So now what I'm adding is actually, oh, I'm fixing up some paper that's coming up. The bottle I just showed you is clear gesso. The reason I want to put clear gesso on is, A, if I put white gesso on, I'll obliterate all my colours, which is not what I want to do. That face is, yeah, don't look at that face. I'm not happy with that face. Um, so clear gesso seals the paper. I want to do a technique on top and it won't work on top of raw paper. So clear gesso puts like a barrier on top of any paper surface, whether it's a printed paper, like a scrap of page or a painted paper like this. So it will seal it and then I will be able to do the technique I want on top. So it goes on cloudy like PVA glue and then it um, dries clear. So I did cut the did cut the um, drying out of that one. So this is what we call reverse stenciling. So it's when you add paint down to your page, you place a stencil on top, and I did pick the wrong stencil. This is the first time I've attempted this reverse stenciling. I've seen it on several YouTube channels on several of the people that I watch, and they make it look so easy, and it looks so beautiful, and in hindsight, I picked the wrong stencil. So basically you lay the paint down and while the paint is still wet you grab a baby wipe and actually rub through the stencil and pick up the paint and you get the design of the stencil. So I thought this stencil would be rather cool but it works better with stencils that have an overall more intricate design because you remove more of the paint if that makes sense. Um, but I do fix this up in a minute so after I did this it's like ew what was I thinking. 
So I will try this attempt this technique again with a different style stencil. But that's alright, art journaling for me is all about learning, making mistakes. It's not really a mistake in art journaling, it's a uh, oopsie, let's try something different. So I do like the blue colour and the idea of doing this reverse stenciling is you can cover up some of the background but still let some of it peek through, if that makes sense. Sorry, not making sense. I am doing some voiceovers between the thunderstorms today, so hopefully they stay away long enough for me to get this done. Every time I decide to start, uh, lightning and thunder has happened. So just grabbing my Stabilo All Pencil just to outline some of the designs from the stencil. Just wanting to make them stand out a bit more because they didn't stand out as well. And I think it was just the type of stencil that I used. So at the moment I'm trying to fix sort of the not liking the page at the moment and excuse my head in the way. My head gets in the way a lot. So Stibulo Oil Pencil basically writes over paint, it can write over glass, it can write on just about any surface and it is water soluble. So you can actually take a wet paintbrush, which I didn't at this stage and actually smart. oh no I do. See I made this page a while ago, I forgot what I'm doing. So this um, paintbrush is just damp and it makes the colours stand out a whole lot more. It makes the colour of the Stabilo Oil Pencil come out a whole lot more. Stabilo Oil Pencils come in black, white and about four or five different colours. They're fun to play with. They are water reactive always so you've just got to be careful. Usually it's the last thing you do on your page because if I go and put some more paint over this, the paint or the water in the paint will pick up the We'll pick up the pencil, but that's right, I don't have much left to do on this page. So just doing a sort of a scribbly border as well. I love to border my pages just because it sort of gives them a frame and an ending point. Um, I don't do it like 100% of the time, but probably about 90% of the time I give my page a border. Sometimes it's just a subtle border, sometimes it's quite a time-consuming detailed border, depending on what sort of mood I'm in. But my go-to is like a scribbly border. I don't try to get it straight because then if it, you get it crooked, it looks bad. So the more scribbly it is, <laughs> the better it looks. So a lot of my paints are getting quite down and nearly empty, trying to use up a lot of older paints um, and wanting to buy some newer colours. So I decided I didn't like all that um, aqua. It was just too much in your face. So I decided to take a stencil and that's the same circle stencil and cover some of it up and it worked really really well. This circle stencil will probably work better for the reverse technique. I must try that again. And that other circle stencil with the four circles with the lines in it, that's one of my designs as well. I'm trying to use more of my stuff in my designs but by the time I I find by the time I design my stuff, cut it, package it, load on my website, I'm sick of seeing the side of it and don't really want to play with it. Isn't that bad? I'm trying to get over that. It's terrible. So just drying that paint off as well. The important thing with art journaling is drying between layers, otherwise you can get into a sloppy mess. So I just grabbed some stamps out of my stash, just some circle ones. I don't even know where these are from. They may be overseas stamps. Um, using an archival ink pad just to add some another layer of texture and some circles. So not even bothering to put it on a block, just using my thumb or finger to hold the stamp works most of the time. I could get out a stamp block, but I probably couldn't buy one or couldn't be bothered. Isn't that terrible? Oh no, I do get out a stamp block and attempt some dots as well. As I said, this is a while ago I did this page. So I liked this stamp set for the little um, circles. So now I think I've got... This was either the dotty ring or the ring one, which is nice. And I, what I tried to do is sort of clump them together or overlap them, um, just so they weren't sort of floating all around. You can sort of barely hardly see them in this picture. That's right, you'll see them in the close-ups at the end. And as you can see, I'm just stamping off into that brown paper. I like to have paper under my um, work surface, protects my table, even though it's covered with paint anyway. And I stamp onto it, I draw onto it, I put extra paint onto it and that becomes um, pretty pattern papers to use as well. I try not to let it get too mucky or muddy so when it gets to a certain point I will just um, change a piece of paper and keep it. 
and put it in my painted papers box. I've got loads of painted papers I do need to use up. Now so I've been using up a few of my paints that are going um, bad as well. I grab out sheets of either the, the brown paper which I've got a huge roll of or that deli paper I was talking about um, like newsprint without newsprint. Um, that stamp set is from Audi. I do know that. I do know where some of my stamp sets are from. And just making pattern papers on um, painted papers just to use up paint and things. So I like this big stamp set. That's really cool. It's not an exact circle. It's a bit fatter on a few sides. And I'm not getting a perfect impression all round because my book is getting a bit lumpy, but I don't mind. So as you can see, I take it off to stamp in the middle of the book. Take it off the stamp book. Seriously, why am I yawning? Every voiceover I start to yawn. Maybe I'm talking too much, not breathing enough. Seriously, I'm not tired. It's like 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I don't know. It's not a good voiceover till I yawn. Let me have a sip of water. So just drying all the ink off. And now I get to work on my focal points. So I was going into my box to find what I'm going to use for my focal point. So this is a Dina Wakely stamp. And I've stamped it out onto some tissue paper. The reason I like to stamp onto tissue paper is if I go to stamp this image into my book, it's it's not um, flat, so you don't get a very good impression. And I usually stamp these in my Tim Holtz stamping platform so I can stamp them over and over again and get a really, really good impression. So I've decided I want three faces, even though two faces are the same, it's sort of, it will flow across the page. So I grabbed a couple of my um, jelly print pages, just some pale yellow ones. There was sort of some yellow in the background of the page and it worked in quite well. So just gluing those down with some, um, what have I got there, little birdie gel matte medium. The tissue paper almost goes transparent um, when you glue it down. So it looks really cool. Some different brands of tissue paper go more translucent than others. It just depends. And it depends sometimes how much matte gel medium you put on there as well. So just drying those off and then I'm going to tear them apart and then they're going to be my focal points. Now I could and usually sometimes do glue the tissue paper straight on my page but because my background was so busy I felt it needed a break between the images and the actual background. And I do apologise, I should have cut this drying time out as well. I thought I did look at this video before I put it in my folder to do a voiceover. As I said, I did this layout probably late last year. I know I'm terribly behind. This won't go up till April. I'm terribly behind in doing videos and voiceovers and I haven't had much up on my channel lately. It's just, oh, life has just been full on. I feel like some days I'm on a freight train and I just can't get off. Oh, seriously. And then today I go, right, great voiceover day, Sunday afternoon, it's quiet here, and then the thunderstorm starts. And I was like, seriously, when I set out to do things, something just crops up and, I don't know, just things happen. Oh, I've obviously gone off to get something. It will change in a minute to the next video. Sorry about that. I was transferring the video to the laptop. I only can film 45 minutes on my video camera. I use a really old video camera that's over 10 years old to film with. Hey, it still works. Why not use it? But the annoying thing is I only can take 45 minutes at a time, which is enough time for me to sit down anyway. Usually after that, I need to get up and have a break. So most of the time I film two lots of 45 minutes and then go through and edit it and get rid of all the bits that I don't want. So just tearing these images, I sort of teared them with a fair bit of a border and then realised I needed to tear down the borders because they weren't really fitting on the page. I have a bit of a play around with the alignment but then go back to the, I like the three across the page. It just looks, I don't know, it just looked good. I was happy with it. Trying to go with my first thoughts lately, otherwise I will sit there and procrastinate and procrastinate, excuse me, and procrastinate. Now for pick up, seriously, what is going on today? So just using a glue stick to glue those down because I already had matte gel medium on top of the faces I didn't want to add more glossiness 
even though that little birdie one says a matte gel medium it has a slight gloss to it maybe you should buy the gloss one one day to see how much gloss is in the gloss because there's a fair bit of gloss in the matte <clears throat> I know I'm being silly <sighs> sitting here editing videos is not the most exciting thing so sometimes my brain just goes off on tangents so now I decide I need some words gonna have words on an out journal page so these little quotes actually not that big quote because they don't get a fit um, so these little, not those quotes either, keep digging Melinda, there we go, found the quotes I wanted. These three little quotes come on the same stamp set I believe, from Dina Wakely. That other one is from the ones that you saw are from Delusions, Diane Reevely. Trying to build up my collection of Dina Wakely stamps and paints, so I've just got some of her new paints, oh and her new sprays, I can't wait to play with those. I sort of don't want to waste them, so I haven't cracked them open yet. I have had a play and made one art journal page um, that I turned into a class that I will run when <laughs> things return to normal in Australia, I'll put it that way. Um, so I have had a little bit of a play, and I ended up buying a whole personal set for myself because I couldn't choose what colours, so I ended up getting a whole 12, and I haven't had a chance. It's been busy, busy to actually have a play but that is on my agenda for next week I do want to have a play with a few techniques I've seen on YouTube from other people that have played with them and Dina Wakely herself at Creativation when I saw was watching all of those videos and I probably shouldn't have been in when was that January yeah shouldn't do that because I've got a whole list of things I want to get and I should be using up what I've got so just adding those quotes down they are on tissue paper um, I believe those were on a wax proof paper so they are a bit whiter in when I stuck them down so they've got a bit of a white halo around them which is fine so I just sort of overlap them onto the bottom right hand corner of the face squares with the faces on it so just drying that off and I think that's about it oh something else needs to be stuck down that glue stick didn't work real well it doesn't the glue sticks work great paper to paper because I was going paper to paint and paper to gel medium um, gesso, the clear gesso, it didn't really work that well. So I did end up having to add some matte gel medium. Got some still photos for you at the end just to have a look at with some close up details. And thank you for watching my video. Do all those lovely things uh, YouTube expect of you. Like, comment, subscribe. Do get them all? Like, comment, subscribe. Here are the still photos just to show you some more details and I will catch you again next time. Hoping to bring you a bit more regular content, but it will depend on what life has in store for me. <laughs> Lately a lot. Stay safe everyone. Talk to you soon. Bye.